The Lord bless you, dear family, as we get through this winter and wait to see what the spring and summer have for us uh, after we've unpacked our bags and gone home. Yeah, I kind of got stoned for that, but I'm sorry, <laughs> I have to be honest with you. Well, today the Lord began. I didn't have my protein drink ready <laughs> when prayer started, and I went in the kitchen and did that unfortunately, during the meeting. So the noise came all the way into this room. And the Lord said, I wish you would get your drink ready before the meeting. <laughs> it's disruptive, Claire, and gives a bad example. But I understand that today you are under the weather. In the future, though, please have it ready. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I felt badly about that. And he said, well, don't feel badly. Just change it, please. Yes, Lord, I will. Thank you. You're welcome, my sweet spouse. Lord, what's on your heart? He began, the spiritual health of the community. My dear ones, you have left the world behind. That means your egos were left at the door before you came in. And he explains what he means by egos later on. Understand that Satan works through your egos more than any other way. That is why I made it a point to say, Blessed is he who does not take offense, but quickly forgives his brother from the heart, truly, and does not form judgments against him. All of you have come from damaging backgrounds. In some way or another, you have all been warped and twisted by your culture and upbringing. That is why when you come to serve me, all these things must be stripped off of you like old paint on a chair, cracked, missing in places, and full of slivers. When I take you into my service, I must remove all that corruption to make you ready to receive the sublime spiritual gifts I have set aside for you. Sometimes I can use a corrosive liquid to remove the old paint. Sometimes I must use a sander. Sometimes a putty knife and a hammer. Sometimes steel wool. Each one of these elements are here in the community. Each one of you belong in that category as tools that I use to refinish and refine every member. So some of us are sandpaper, some of us are steel wool, some of us are putting knives. Sometimes you are the chair, and sometimes you are the steel wool. Everyone here in this community gets a turn to both strip and refinish each member. I want you to get a clear picture of who you are and who you were not. Dear children, you must leave all the baggage of the past at the door and come forward, willing to be exposed and stripped. But behind all this work, there must be love, brotherly love. Above all things, I require you to love and forgive one another. I require you to leave the baggage of the past outside the monastery and come expecting to be made into my image. There's no room here for defensiveness, excuses, taking offense, feeling slighted. Do you understand? We are in war, and this is boot camp. You cannot fight the good fight if you are still putting up walls around your ego to protect yourself. What do I mean by ego? Very simply, pride, needing to look good, needing to appear intelligent, capable, in order to protect yourself. All of that must go. It is in the way and will keep you from attaining holiness. And the easier you make it by cooperating, the faster and less painful it will be. However, if you cherish certain things that do not belong in the religious life, such as how to dress, what to eat, your sleep schedule, your way of doing things, your need to be right and show everyone you know best, 
in other words, to prove yourself to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. If you have this need, you will fail miserably and find life here very hard. But if you come, knowing you do not know everything, doing things the way you are asked to do them, staying with our rule of life in clothing and jewelry and eating and other such things, and with an eager heart to want to be purified, you are going to love this life. If you come without a need to be right or defend yourself or have your own way or be honored in your preferences, if you come that way, you will make swift progress in this life and find great favor with me, with all the angels and saints, and with my Father. It is your choice. Choose this day who you will serve, yourself or me, and then allow yourself to be retaught, remolded in preparation for heaven. He who would keep his life will truly lose it, but he who willingly gives up his self-life for me will find himself living the most treasured life that any soul can live on this earth. In order for this community to thrive and survive, there has to be those who direct traffic and help cover the needs of everyone. And none of you are perfect so there is great need for patience with one another. That's why when you see a problem, you pray. You pray for them, and then I will work with them to correct it. You would call such as these leaders. I call them foot-washing servants because they must constantly keep everyone moving in the right direction, doing what is needed when it is needed, and most of all, loving one another, not finding fault or pushing back at those who have to direct traffic. Believe me, their job is hard enough without your objections and judgments and taking offense. Plus, they also must answer to me for your welfare. They are being stripped as well as you are. They are being taught as well. They are being reformed in their habitual way of life also. So it falls on everyone else to love and support them. Their job is not easy. Love and support them in every conceivable way and do not show a sour attitude or make it difficult for them. I promise you, I know exactly what their faults are and how to correct them and I miss nothing. But I have a way of doing things layer by layer that I must use to bring all of you into a state of holiness. And if you try to do my job and help me, you will only get in the way. If you hold on to hidden resentments because you're asked to do things that you don't approve of, you're only going to hurt yourself and the community. So try to lose your life for me and allow yourself to be molded into who I have called you to be and be merciful with those who are given the job of being in charge of the way things are run. Pray for them, back them up, and please don't push back because they come to me crying because they cannot do their jobs well because of one or two stubborn souls. Please don't be one or two of those stubborn souls. Rather be the soul that has come ready to be stripped and has no preferences and just wants to cooperate and see the healthy community grow. You will be very pleased with the results at the end of the day. And that's the end of his message. I wanted to say something too. I don't know quite how to put it. Let's say that you have an interest in something, and for some reason, you have no idea why, someone else has been told to to go ahead and use that something, right? And 
you, you're kind of protective of that something because you had plans for that something, right? <laughs> but uh, someone else in leadership didn't know about those plans and gave it to someone else. So what do you do in a situation like that? Well, the best thing to do is to go along with the program, leave it alone, give it up, because that's the self saying, I had, I had, I wanted to use that. That's mine. Uh, not to protect yourself, but say, that my brother needs this more than I do, and give it to them. Can you live with that? I see two nodding heads out of ten people in the room. <laughs> That's not a good sign. <laughs> oh, boy. I have not done my job. And I'm not perfect, so I make the same mistakes everyone else makes. But that's a sign of a person protecting their own stuff or their own desires, their own way, when they should be thinking about the other soul, not themselves. They can still go and say to the, you know, to the people in charge, you know, I'm glad so-and-so got such-and-such, but I, I also am going to need one of those such-and-such. Can you take care of that? Can you help me with that? God will provide. He always does. But in the meantime, you won't get caught in the trap of self-love and uh, depriving someone else, maybe making them feel bad or whatever. You won't get caught in that trap. And i got to tell you, the enemy is setting traps all over the place, little things. You know, you're walking along, doing a good job, and all of a sudden you trip over something and you go, Ugh. And then you get all upset because you tripped. Well, he's got these little places where he set up trip points. And they're over little things, childish things, e egotistical things, getting our feelings, our noses out of joint. They're over that kind of thing where the devil inserts a barb, and that barb starts to pinch our skin and get infected, and we get a fever. And then we have a, a root of bitterness growing in our hearts. It's so easy. In, in a heartbeat, we can get a root of bitterness with one little seed of bitterness and resentment. I wanted that. You know, that kind of thing. That goes into the heart and it starts to grow and choke out the spiritual life. So try not to be offended, guys. And try to love one another and not be offended. I'm not good at this job. I confess it. I am not good at this job. The Lord is. But sometimes I miss the Lord, right? Sometimes I miss him. And when I miss him, it, it hurts other people. So I have to go back and be corrected and try and come back and do the right thing. But we all have the same intention. We want to live happily ever after in heaven. So he's asking us to try and live happily ever after right now, <laughs> right? <laughs>